then, welcome to Mastocast, episode 49, the monoblog podcast, hosted by this fucking dickhead you listen to now, Master Dan, the monoblog podcast. Did I already mention that? I probably did. Yeah. Monoblog podcast where I just chat about all things that I've been up to, music, video games, that sort of shit, if you're that way inclined. Welcome to what is a big one, really. A big one. A real, real big one. If you listen to this on the Friday that it comes out, you are not only having a good weekend, but you are hopefully also celebrating the one-year anniversary of the Mastocast. This is it. Episode 49. And a uh, bit of shame it wasn't episode 50, but never mind. <laughs> that's just the way it's panned out. I've had the odd week off here and there, and it's ended up being 49. But that's fine. That's absolutely fine. But yeah, welcome to this really, really special one. It's a big one, just to let you know. This one's going to be a big, quite long one. That's not what she said. Um, we got a download review. I went to Download Festival this year, so there's a lot of go on about that and uh, everything surrounding it, everything... Um, also, we had a little bit of a Nintendo Direct as well, which I'll go on about at the end of the video. Um, video? Podcast? What the fuck am I going on about? My head is going 100 miles an hour because I've just had a coffee. And I am very, very excited to be going on about this one-year anniversary episode. But I just want to say thanks to everyone who has listened to all 48 other episodes you probably haven't but thanks to anyone who's listened to a single episode of mastercast throughout the year um it's been uh, i don't want to say a journey because i've literally just not left my fucking um you know chair my podcast chair in my room all i've done is just every week just logged on and just started talking about shit which you know i like to think is uh hard working in a way but you know, it's been a, it's been a good year. I've really enjoyed doing this thing, and uh, I started off thinking like oh, I'll probably only do about four or five episodes, and I'll lose interest. But here we are, one year into the Mastercast, still going. People are still listening, which I find is absolutely mental, and I'm very very grateful for it. So yeah, thank you anyone who has listened over the past year, who has submitted a question, who has you know said nice things about the podcast, who has guested on the podcast as well had a few guests you know shout out jake shout out cam chappers shout out spike shout out Haley as well you know we've had a few guests on hopefully get them more, some more of that um in the year coming up next like within this year who knows um but yeah um i'm just very very happy to still be doing it and um you know still i still um have the you know encouragement to sit on my ass and chat for a bit and upload it onto the interwebs for you all to listen to and um yeah i'm very very grateful that people are still listening and uh yeah here's to one year of um mastercast thanks very much everyone really really appreciate you and uh yeah what better way to celebrate than talking about download festival um i'm just gonna go straight into it really because uh it's um it's going to be a, obviously it's going to be a long episode really, um, talking about everything I've done over the weekend, the lineup and stuff and everything that went on surrounding it. Um, first thing I'll say, the weather was fucking all over the place, right? The weather was all over the place. Fucking shambles. <laughs> like, download, I'm sure you would have seen the uh, footage by now, was an absolute mud sight, okay? Um, the weather just did not know what to do with itself, like... Wednesday, we arrived there, and it was sound, it was fine, it was sunny, dry, lovely, pretty much same with the Thursday, like, that was alright, that was uh, pretty sound, Friday, we got a bit of rain, um, Thursday, we got a fucking monsoon, like, it, it felt like a monsoon, it was insane, and, uh, like, you know, some bands have had to, like, pause the set and everything, uh, an, old, an old baby metal had to pause their set for about... 15 minutes or so or something like that i mean i didn't watch them i saw from a distance but yeah that's what went down for baby metal and uh the sunday like um a lot of the bands had to push their set back some of them had to be cut short and uh like it was actually sunny on the sunday <laughs> that, that, this is what i'm talking about it was just all over the fucking place the sunday was beautiful it was gorgeous and like but it was still an absolute swamp like Wellies were definitely needed throughout the weekend, honestly. Glad I got them. Glad I got them. 
So, yeah, it was, uh, the weather was fucking all over the place. It was madness. Absolute madness. Um, I've got to tip my hat off as well to everyone who's worked down low this weekend, right? I think this is the best it's ever been organized for me, you know, um, with, with regards to, like, the, the traffic and, and everything like that, getting people in and out of the festival, getting parked up and all that, assigning where people should be parking, like, you know, depending on where they are camping, it's just made life totally easier for us. Really, really has done. Like, last year, we suffered, like, shite fucking volunteers telling us uh, to go park at a certain car park when one of them's full. So we had to do, like, a 45 to an hour's walk to our campsite of all our fucking gear, which was absolute hell on when that car park we was meant to go to was actually open. This year, yeah, I was fucking fuming. So <laughs> this year, they've actually... Told everyone in advance where to go, which signs to follow. They gave everyone like a drop point, like uh, on Google Maps, to go like to people depending on where they are coming from, like whether it's from Nottingham or like anywhere from the M1 northbound or southbound, anything like that. Like they really had their heads screwed on for that, and like it's just really well organized. Like it only took us about 15 20 minutes to walk to our campsite with all our gear, and like that has made such a difference. Like it is so much better and like you know the you know people serving the food the bar everything everything was quick everything was on point the only thing that we had to wait a bit was like just getting into the actual arena itself like there was a couple of times where it, it took the piss a little bit uh but that was probably my only complaint really like you know and all the stuff there like seemed to be like pretty happy with what they're doing like um they went overworked or anything like that. People were happy to serve you and stuff. Like, it was just a good vibe all around, like, download this year. Um, really well organized, really well put together. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was awesome, man. It was, it was just a really good experience. And uh, one more thing as well to get into. This and this sort of uh, started happening right before the festival. So a few bands actually pulled out due to uh, Barclay Card being a sponsor with download not the main sponsor but being one of the sponsors and uh apparent and like you know apparently so I, I don't know the full ins and outs of it but back can't have some sort of connections with um with money being funded for the israeli government for the weapons or something like that and uh you know some bands certain bands have pulled out B basically the hardcore bands from the fourth stage uh scowl speed ithaca and uh who else uh, i can't remember i, d I do apologize <laughs> uh, but yeah a few bands were still uh pest control that was the other band yeah uh, a few bands had pulled out because of that and uh you know I, I was i was annoyed at first like um i was actually pretty annoyed um i was i was under the impression thinking nah this is not going to make any difference they're just pulling it out it's a bit of a pain in the ass really I'd, r I'd rather just be watching them I'd rather them go on stage and say something about Free Palestine more than anything else. Because I'm on the same wavelength as these, these people. Like, you know, I I want nothing more than the Israelis to fucking stop and just Free Palestine. I'm all about that. Like, and, uh, but, I, you know, I was still kind of annoyed that they pulled out. Like, I would rather them just, like, get up on stage and, like, do the set and maybe say something about where they're standing. You know what I mean? Against Barker Card. But... As it turns out, like, during the weekend, because of that, and also, um, and Shikari put up a statement about it as well, this caused Barclay Card to pull from the festival, which is insane, which is insane progress, which I, I gotta admit, like, just them four bands, like, pulling out of the festival because of that, like, and then Shikari, like, posting, like, a statement about it, and Shikari still played, but they posted something about it, about boycotting back the card and other like uh companies that are sort of inclined with like like sending funds to Israeli the government that sort of thing like it's it's you know a, a small drop in this ocean has caused a bit of like a ripple effect and it's caused back the card to pull out of the festival which is um you know i i look at it now and i think actually fair fucking play like You've you've really really made some you've they've really made a fucking difference here you know anything to you know help um the cause 
and uh, get these fucking companies away from from uh, you know any of this fucking bullshit. You know, I, I, I'm 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 impressed more than anything now. So yeah, shout out to those bands. Uh, they also did like a um, a benefit gig, like um, on that weekend of downloads. Like since I pulled out, they put on like this one band bill. I was like Speed, Scowl, and Pest Control, and some of us. Like I was like, pretty good fucking bill actually. It was in Birmingham, and um, yeah, they all did that, and that was a fundraiser for Palestine. So yeah, shout out to them, shout out to those bands. So. That's it, pretty much. Um, surround and download. Let's get into the actual, you know, the bands, all the shenanigans. Got there on the Wednesday. Had a pretty much of a chill day, really. For those who don't know, download actually opens um two days before the week the music actually starts. So they have a lot of like um stuff on in the village, like uh, for people to watch, like some comedians, some some smaller bands that are playing. That's like silent discos, like bingo and shit like and podcasts there's absolutely all sorts that goes on so um the wednesday we got there we, we pretty much had a bit of a chill day um uh, didn't really do much it wasn't until like we we rocked up to the village for a little bit and watched uh this band called oh my god it's church that were on in the doghouse tent and they were fucking off it they were like a proper like baptist like hallelujah church type band and um fucking like the dude like front in the band was like wearing like a cowboy hat and like a gold suit and he had like the proper like jive and like uh, jive jazz hand like uh backing vocalist with the big robes on like it was like a proper full-on like baptist church type thing like hallelujah praise sexy jesus is what you what you were saying like maybe chuckle quite a bit and like you know they, they had like a, an amazing keyboard player and like an amazing saxophone player and, like a hell of a band I don't know what the songs were they were actually playing. I don't know if it was their own or like they were playing some covers. It was more like that, that sort of thing. But, but yeah, it, that was really really cool. Um, Thursday, um, some more of our friends arrived to the campsite, and I didn't watch anything. I didn't really go to the village until Sapnum podcast was on with Alex ba featuring Alex Baker and Alex Holcomb. Watched that with Haley, and uh, that was quite interesting. We're talking about how bands should like you know progress into the music industry and get the music out there it was quite good quite insightful i kind of knew where they were gonna they were gonna be doing it anyways with that but it was um that, that was, it was still quite interesting to watch anyways um uh, after that pretty much went back to the campsite if, if i remember rightly um yeah and, and just like you know stayed up drank and um you know had a good time with everyone on camp it was awesome and uh, yeah, so that's pretty much your Wednesday and your Thursday. It's just got all sorts of shit going on, um, whether it be com like comedians and stuff like that, or like silent disco, anything like that. Uh, yeah, it, it was. It's just a good vibe. It's good to get there early and all, like get set up and just have a good drink and stuff like that before the music happens. And so yeah, we get to the Friday of Download Festival. So um, I didn't actually get down to the arena till about four o'clock because uh, the first band i wanted to see uh was polyphia on the main stage and uh what a start to my day i gotta tell you like polyphia a band who have just blown up over the past few years like with their incredible incredible musicianship like uh mainly down to tim henson being like the sort of um sort of center sort of um not center stage, but you know, it, it's sort of like the um the focus of that band. Uh, everybody else in that band are also incredible as well. But like, like you know, they're they're blown up recently, like with uh, like the last last couple of albums. And um, I was really really interested to see them live. And like from the moment they played, they sounded fucking huge. It sounded amazing. And uh, before I fucking go on about this, m may I just say, the main stage sound this year nailed absolutely nailed usually i find bands like playing on that main stage sounding like really muddy or whatever like just not sounding all that great fucking nailed it this year whoever was on that main stage did the sound and everything well fucking done anyways polyphia were awesome just like really really tight um they had they had fire they had pyro for an instrumental band um but like both of those guitarists um like are just absolutely incredible what they do like like just fucking willy diddly fast fucking picking and um like the play like playing god with like the classical guitars and everything like that like just unbelievable i just made me want a quick guitar straight away 
but yeah, Polyphia were great. It was good to finally see them. Uh, but what to see them live for a long, long time. And yeah, finally got there. Um, then went to the fourth stage um, to get myself ready for Callous Starboys. But Aaron were also on on the fourth stage. Uh, I only got to see uh, the last song they were playing at the set because um, they were clashing with Polyphia. Um, but, you know, they sounded great. I wish I could have heard some more. Um, but yeah, that's that's Aaron. Um, I waited for the Callous Starboys to come on. And uh, they came on and absolutely fucking slayed it. Um, yeah, the, the Carlos Style Boys are a band that I absolutely love. Um, yeah, I, I, I loved everything from... Uh, well, I love all of the stuff, really. I, I, but, like, I really got onto them on their, their album that came out a couple of years ago. And uh, their EP that came out last year. And, uh, like, they, they, were, they were fucking awesome, man. They were really, really awesome, like... They're just like proper dangerous skate plan worship, like faith no more worship as well. Like, and they were just like they were really really tight. Like, uh, their front man uh, is really fucking hilarious. He was just like in the breakdown of a song, like he was just telling people not to buy a car. It's like, do not buy a car, you will have an accident. And then at the end, going again, do not buy a car. But yeah, it was just really really fucking good. Like the band are like really tight. Like, it was a big gig for them, like, you know, they've never played Download before, so, yeah, it was awesome, it was awesome. Uh, I then went over to the second stage for Mr. Bungle, right, and I don't actually know too much by, that much by Mr. Bungle. All I know is that Mike Patton is from that band from Faith No More, and they've got Dave Lombardo on drums from Slayer, they've got Scott Ian from Anthrax on guitar, and that's all I pretty much knew of. And they're pretty much sort of sticking to, like, the, um the later i think there's like a an album like a fresh metal album that they recorded which was uh re-recordings of early demos they were pretty much just sticking to that and it sounded they were fucking mint like they were tight as fucking like they had like some proper riffs going on like some of them were like proper fucking two-step like fresh riffs they were awesome and mike Patton is just like for me one of the greatest frontmen that's ever lived he's absolutely awesome he's a fucking nut job but I love him. Like, his vocals were class. Like, all his harsh vocals, his facial expressions, everything. All the other fucking various instruments he's got on stage as well that he uses, like, the vocoders and all that. But, like, he's he's fucking... He's, he's, he fucks around a lot. Like, there was one bit where, like, he had straight face held, like, this squeaky toy. It was like a crocodile. And, uh... He, he was squeaking this crocodile, like... <laughs> like putting it up to the microphone while Dave Lombardo was playing this xylophone behind him, which was fucking mad. And then they covered True by Spandau Ballet. Like, what the fuck? Like, they did that. Like, right in the middle of True by Spandau Ballet, they did, like, I think they did, like, one of the choruses or, like, like the middle eight or something, like, made that, made that thrash even went back to normal again. Like, it was fucking bonkers. And, uh, it, they did um, that song, I forgot who it was by, but all oh, by myself. I forgot, what it's, I forgot what it's called, I forgot what it's by, but they did that, but Mike Patton did his own rendition of it, it was his own lyrics, and it was all like, go fuck yourself. Just like, anything that man touches is just fucking gold. Like, Mr. Bungle were great, they're really, really good, good fun, really, really fucking punchy, hardcore, thrash music. Like, um, I I'll be listening to some more, definitely. And, uh, yeah, it was just cool to see them. I think that was, like, their first... No, it wasn't. Um, it was the first time coming, like... I think they played London, like, one or two nights before. And that was, like, their first UK show in God knows how many years. Um, so, yeah, it was good to, like, see them there. It was, it was great. But to see Royal Blood on the main stage. They were the co-headliners of the day. And, um, Royal Blood. I like Royal Blood. Um... Especially, especially their first album. I absolutely love their debut album. I think it's great. It's got full of bangers on there. Um, you know, last few albums, I could take a leave, really. I quite like Typhoons. Second album, meh. Uh, their latest one is very much meh as well. But I thought I'd go over anyways. And uh, Jesus Christ. Like, they sounded fat. They sounded thick live, man. Like, for just that two-piece... I believe they had, like, a session musician as well, like, a keyboard player, like, somewhere in the background for some of the stuff. And, um, yeah, like, like, 
that bass tone just sounded absolutely gnarly, like massive and huge. And, uh, you know, Benji Talent is a hell of a drummer as well, like, great, great drummer. Um, they had, like, a technical difficulty for a few minutes. For some reason, I had to stop. I don't know what, what happened. Um, it sounded fine from where I was, so there was nothing cutting out or anything, but, like, they had to stop for about a few minutes. I don't know whether it was... Um, Mike uh, having a bit of a <laughs> fucking fit like he did at BBC Radio on Big Weekend or whatever over something just smaller shit. But, like, they had to go for a few minutes. But, like, you know, I was hearing shit like fucking, um, you know, turn the lights out and um, tent on the skeleton, fucking um, out of the black, figure it out. All those songs, like, it sounded great. Like, I really enjoyed Royal Blood more than I thought I would do. I thought they would just be uh, pissing around with, like, the... Um, you know, new stuff. Um, but yeah, they, they, they sounded massive. They sounded massive. And yeah, I, I'm really glad I saw the rest of the set, really, after Mr. Bungle. Um, but yeah, next up, I saw a fucking brilliant set. Brilliant set from the headliners. First time headline and download on the Friday. Queens of the Stone Age came back to download to headline. And uh, this was fucking brilliant, man. This is my band of the day, definitely, on the Friday. It was absolutely fucking awesome, man. Like, the best. The absolute best I've ever seen Queens of Stone Age. I've seen Queens of Stone Age twice before. They played Download in 2013 on the main stage. They were Sub and I Maiden. But the sound wasn't all that there for them. Like, it was quite windy that day. Like, the sound was just quite wishy-washy. The second time, I saw them at Leeds Festival. Opening up the second stage as a secret band, uh, which was a fucking... It was great, but, like, it was the day Villains came out, so I didn't know any songs off that album, and uh, they literally played songs from that album only, and I think they played, like, two older songs. I think they played, like, uh, fucking No One Knows and um, uh, My God Is A Son. But this time, this uh, this set list, though, for Queens of Stone Age, man, like, it was unbelievable, man. Uh, it was so good, like... They also sounded absolutely perfect. They came on, it went straight into Little Sister, bang, and like the sound was absolutely perfect from there on. Like there was no like, you know, big introduction or anything like that. They got quite a few lights on the stage, but that's about it. Like they looked really cool on stage. Uh, but yeah, the fucking set list was absolutely to die for. Here's the uh, so Chris Stonehenge set list here for anyone who was um a fan. Um, because, yeah, God, this was so good. This was so, so good. Um, fucking Little Sister, Burn the Witch, My God is a Son, Smooth Sailing, Pip and Machete, Emotion Sickness, Go Off the Floor, The Lost Art of Keeping a Secret, Carnivore, The Sky is Falling, oh my God, that was amazing. Better Living Through Chemistry, Sick, 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 I Sat by the Ocean, Straight Jacket Fitting, Make It With You, You Think I Ain't Worth a Dollar, God, when they played that, No One Knows, and A Song for the Dead. Fucking, it was amazing it was absolutely amazing all the songs were like f like really tight sounded crystal clear like it was near enough like one two three here we go straight into every song like every now and then josh homie would say something to the crowd he was probably fucking rat ass but he sounded fucking amazing like just the way he was sort of like acting he kind of like he was like you know swayed from side to side and like he went into the crowd and all that and like just the way he was talking was like uh download i uh it's really good to be a man like you all sexy, sexy people. I'm stoned and fucked up. Who's stoned and fucked up? But he still sounded fucking great. Like, vocally, he sounded really on point. His guitar playing was on point. Like, the whole band were tight as fuck. Looked fucking cool as well. There's something about Queen's of Stone Age as well. Though. They just look really fucking cool. And, uh... Yeah, I just loved everything about their set. They were amazing. And, uh, you know, lots of songs from Songs for the Deaf. Um, the new, in times New Roman stuff, like the new songs, sounded great. Uh, like, I mean, and that, that, was a, that was an album that I thought was okay. Ever since then, I've started going back to it and I've appreciated it a lot more. And, uh, you know, you, you know, stuff like Little Sister and Sick, Sick, Sick and all that. And uh, uh, Make It With You, that was... That, that was like a big crowd sing along moment, like uh, get the band to quiet down and get everyone to sing "Make It With You." Like, let the boys have a go, let the girls have a go. It was great, man. Like, for for definitely for me, uh, band of that day, 
Queens of Stone Age. Like, they sounded brilliant. They were tight. They were on point. Looked amazing. Like, yeah, a, a perfect set for them, really, to be honest. Like, the best time I've ever seen them. And they were just, oh, amazing. Absolutely amazing. Queens of Stone Age. Headline and download for the first time. I'd happily have them back. They didn't have the biggest crowd. Um, certainly didn't have the biggest crowd out of all free headliners. But, you know, it wasn't, like, as bad as, like, what Biffy Clyro was a couple of years ago where there was fucking probably the size of, like, the second stage on a arcade day. You know what I mean? Like, but, like, it was... I think it was still... I think they pulled it off. I think they pulled it off. I think they can come back again. Definitely. So, yeah, that is the Friday over and done with. So... Who did I see first thing on the Saturday? Saturday was a bit of a pain in the ass to get in, really, to be honest. Like, that was when uh, the the queue was getting into the arena was at its worst, like, with all the bag searches, really. And, um, unfortunately, I missed Harriet, who were uh, the first band on the the second stage, the Opus stage. Um, I wanted to get in time to, to catch them, but the, just the queue was just taking far too long. And, uh, yeah, I got in. And uh, they were walking off. <laughs> so I fucking completely missed them all together. And um, by the time I got in, it fucking hammered it down. It absolutely hammered it down when rain. So I was the only one there at that point. Um, I, I set off earlier than everybody else just so I could see Harriet. But obviously I didn't get there in time. Uh, I just I just booked off to the Dog 2 stage. Just so I could get under... Um, just, just so I could get under the fucking shelter really i got a can of pepsi max and it fucked off in there um and that's the first band i saw in there were a band called knife bride also like just bear in mind like i, I had um i had uh, no sort of um there was no bands i wanted to see around about this time so i, I watched a couple of bands in here um i watched this band called knife bride um from brighton i believe they were from and uh they were they were pretty good like the sort of um down tuned um within temptation type sound but with a bit more of a spirit box twist to it they sounded pretty good pretty tight um not bad i didn't know anything by them but like they sounded pretty good like they were very very happy to be there um also of black era who are a band i've never heard of before there were two um two vocalists both wearing these like uh i don't know what what time you call it, Victorian kind of like dresses, like really big thrilly dresses, and it was going along to the this sort of horror car type um, like dubstepy sort of music like with a bit of a tinge of rock not for me really, to be honest, but like I was just getting out of that fucking rain, it really hammered it down, big time so yeah uh, when they finished, um, I had a bit of a walk out when the, the rain um eased off a little bit it got sunny again so oh good it's sunny now i'll take off my fucking poncho um so yeah i met up with my dad um me and Haley met up with my dad uh just the main stage just to catch up uh, there was a band called the hunter on the main stage uh band i'm not really familiar with i think they've done quite a bit on radio one and they've played like slam dunk here and there but they're obviously doing well to be on the main stage of download and they they sounded pretty good um not too bad really um you know, usually when I hear of these like sort of BBC Radio One car type bands, like nothing but thieves or whatever, like catfish in the bottom, and like I'm, I'm usually turned off by them. But like these were, these sounded pretty good, like pretty, like pretty rocky, pretty heavy in some parts. Like some of it sounded like um, Citizen in places, that, which I quite liked. Um, yeah, they sounded pretty good. They were very, very happy to be there. Um, I then, yeah, so that yeah, they were they were good. I then made my way to the back to the dog tube stage to catch Guilt Trip, who are a band I've talked about on this podcast before. And uh, yeah, I talked about their album uh, that came out last year called Severance, which is a fucking brilliant album. I was very much looking forward to them. They packed out that tent, man. They really, really did. Like, they did really well to pack out that tent. Like, I think they're on the second album. They don't, like, do massive touring that much. And, uh, you know, they've, they've got a UK tour coming up as well like as a few dates sold out of that uh, but yeah like they, they filled that tent enough big time like they did really really fucking well like they sounded really really fucking heavy they had loads of circle pits going and all that just that really sort of awesome metal car sounding um kind of hardcore type feel to them a bit like what malevolence do 
lots of those um, machine head sounding like guitar parts with the harmon harmonics and that. Like these are a band to fucking look out for, man. If they can fill out that tent, a download, they could they could put them on the fucking main stage, man. Put them on the main stage. I'd I'd love to see a band like that fucking ripping up on there. And uh, after Guild Trip was a band called Gel. Um, we were like proper fast hardcore type band. Um, I don't really know a lot by them. Um, it's kind of in a similar vein of like a scowl, um, or a speed. Um, but like they were great. Uh, didn't really say a lot to the crowd. Like they just literally went up on there, fucking smashed through it, did their thing, and uh, and fucked off basically. But they they sounded good. I really liked them. Um, once gel finished, it absolutely shut it down with rain again. And this was when the the rain was probably at its worst. It was really fucking bad. Like, uh, I was, um, we were about to make our way over to see Slaughter to Prevail, and, um, like, the, the, it rained that bad, we just went back inside the fucking Dog 2 stage, and, um, like, just to get away, like, we could see in the distance, like, Baby Metal had to cut their set, like, like, right, right in the middle of playing, like, the, the rain got really fucking bad. Like, deja vu, really. Baby Metal played the, the second, sorry, the main stage before in 2016. And it was a fucking monsoon then. And it was a monsoon again. Fucking, it just don't get a fucking break, do they? Honestly. So, like, um, we, we were at the Dog 2 stage. And uh, Dying Wish were just starting. I think we caught, like, the first couple of songs of their, their set. Like, just to get away from the rain. And uh, when it stopped raining, like, uh, I left them. I mean, they sounded great, actually, Dying Wish. They sounded really good. Um, I love that band. They're awesome. Uh, but I was really, really interested in seeing Slaughter to Prevail on the second stage. So maybe way over there. That second stage was fucking packed. It was really busy for that band. There was obviously a lot of... There's a lot of hype about um, Slaughter to Prevail and all that. Like, especially, you know, Alex Terrell being the fucking mad vocalist that he is. Um, very, very impressive, man. I mean, I like, uh, the the, the the sort of like it sounded like a your, your general deathcore band really like uh you know drums triggered to fucking all that and uh like down tuned like seven strings and stuff um but i quite like the album that they brought out a couple of years ago and some of the singles that they, they brought out um but the fucking hell that dude that dude behind the microphone he is a monster he sounds like a fucking bear being attacked by a fucking chainsaw or something he he's Gutteral as fuck, like he, he he doesn't have like the the microphone like touching his mouth as well while he's doing it like cupping the microphone, like he's got it like a good foot away from his mouth and he's like screaming and doing all these like really low gutturals like and, like it cuts through like fucking crazy, and like there was one part like um I, I believe it was on their latest single Viking they played that live, and um. Like, there was one bit where the music cut out, he put his microphone down, and he screamed this fucking mosh call without a microphone. And I was, like, right at the back at the fucking bar, and I could hear him perfectly. Like, what the fuck? Like, it was insane. It Like, the range that bloke has, just the power from his voice. It was unbelievable. I was walking out there like, did he, that just fucking happen? Did that fucking happen? It did. Honestly, like, he's a fucking real deal, man. Like, all the videos that people see of him, like, going fucking mental on his music and all that on YouTube and shit. Like, he's a fucking real deal, man. He's fucking great. Yeah, sort of reveal, though. They were good. They were great. Um, but he is fucking mad. Um, went over to the main stage, Takash and to Shikari. Um, a band I've been meaning to see again for a while, to be fair. Ever since I saw them head die in Slam Dunk, which I believe was 2017, I think it was? Yeah, 2017, and uh, I came back, and uh, they are now on the main stage, a download, and uh, they were fucking awesome, man. And Shikari are brilliant. I love that band. Um, they um, they had a lot of screens, they had a lot of like these like light boxes and stuff like that. Um, there was the set list was like a good mix of everything, really, a mix of everything from all the other albums, like. Couple of um, Take It to the Skies, quite a few of the new albums, some from uh, Dreamers Hotel and that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, they, they were fucking great, like really, really tight. They sounded awesome. Like, and they did like a lot of like remixes of like their songs as well. Like, um, 
like you know, like the sat kind of like the EDM dubstepy sort of drops that they do with that that their music. Like they did a lot of that sort of stuff. Like they were just really good fun to watch, and um, like they had a really good turnout as well. There was a lot of people there for them. Fucking Raul Reynolds like jumped in the mud like he got in the crowd he he looked at the mud and he was just like i'm so he said he said i'm i'm so tempted and then he went nah and then he turned back around again and then he went fuck and he jumped right in the fucking mud and like a real dirty boy the lad and like he was just fucking caked in mud from head to toe and um once he did that he was like welcome to the dreamers hotel then went it straight into that song which is a fucking banger uh yeah they were fucking great they were absolutely brilliant uh, and I've got tickets to see them again at uh, Stockton, the globe of all places. Never thought I'd see them there, but here we are. Um, so yeah, they're, they're, they've got a UK tour that's announced um, for, I believe, is it the back end of this year? Yeah, and it's in all sorts of fucking random places. It's not like fucking London, Manchester, Birmingham. It's fucking Folkestone. Friggin' Kings Lynn is one of them? I don't know. It's, it's in a lot of random places that bands that basically don't go to. And then... Went over to the second stage to watch While She Sleeps, um, who were fucking great. I know, like, um, a few weeks ago, I, I was talking about their album, um, Self Hell, that just came out. Um, I don't like it, really, at all, uh, but I was still keen to see While She Sleeps, because I know they are a fucking hell of a live band, and uh, I, I've always loved their, like, uh, DIY sort of ethos, and... Um, yeah, the, like the like they sounded great. Like they sounded really punchy. They were really energetic on stage. They had lots of fucking fire. There was um like all of the like the all of like the backdrop and everything and um is just made by them as well. Everything is made by them. Like like just hats off to that band for just being like one of the hardest working bands ever. Like even though I'm not all that keen on their late album, I've just got high respects for that band. Really do. And they sounded great. They looked great. They were awesome. And then, after this, the headliner of the second stage. Pantera. I went and saw Pantera, right? Uh, this will be probably my only time seeing Pantera, right? I, you know, I've loved seeing all them songs. Um, I love I loved growing up with all those songs. I've wanted to see them live. Finally got to see them live. They were fucking awesome. Pantera are great. Pantera are really, really great, man. Like, it was just good to, like, hear them songs live for the first time. And, um, you know, they had, like, lots of fire and shit like that. Like, it was, like, from start to finish, like, you could, you could tell it was, like, a real tribute to, like, um, like, Dimebag Daryl and Vince, uh, and Vinnie Paul as well. Like, like it was a full-on tribute to those guys. Like, their, their faces were, like, on their, um, the drum kit and everything like that. They had, like, loads of, like, flashback footage and all that to back when they were like, back when they were younger and all that on the screens. Like, it was a really, really, really cool, like, um, tribute to the, the Dimebag brothers. Like, they were fucking awesome. Like, um, the Dowell brothers, should I say. Um, yeah. Pantera are great. It was really, really good to, like, hear those songs live. I fucking mushed my silly little head off. And, uh, you know, I know there's a lot of controversy around, uh, you know, Phil Fel Fel Anselmo and shit like that. And, uh, yeah, I'm aware of it as well. You know, I didn't support whatever he said all them years ago. He has apologised for it. Is it enough? Probably not. And, like, but, you know, I feel like... I don't know. I just thought I'd give this one a go where I'd just separate the art from the artist. Like, just be the selfish and just go enjoy it. And uh, listen to those songs I used to love. Learning on guitar, everything like that. And uh, just mosh my head off, basically. Pantera were great. They were, they were, they genuinely were great. So, and uh, you know, they were playing the festival. I had to go see it while it was on. I'm not gonna bother with the UK tour, really. Like, um, I'm just gonna leave the, my legacy of Pantera at that. So, yeah. Um, but if you got tickets to that, enjoy. I know you bloody will. And uh, after that, Fallout Boy headlining. Download the main stage for the first ever time. And, uh, my God, they were fucking great. I'm not the biggest Fallout Boy fan at all, really. Uh, like, I'm more of, like, a greatest hits fan with them. Like, I don't actively listen to them either, really. 
But they were fucking awesome, man. Fall Out Boy were great. They were great. They did, like, a proper career-spanning set list, really. And, like, uh, they had this huge, grandiose um, stage production, which was really, really cool. Like, it was... um, They were basically playing songs right from the first album all the way up to now, like, in that order, pretty much. So, like, as I was walking in, they they were playing fucking... um, Grand Theft Auto, and I was like, yeah, nice one, there we go, and, uh, like, yeah, it was just, like, a, a full-on, like, fucking celebration of, uh, their music and their past and everything, and, like, what, like, whatever songs they were playing from that album, like, the stage production, like, sort of was themed around that, so, like, they, they were playing songs from, like, Take This To Your Grave, it was themed around that, and, uh, you know, um, Follow You Do, and all that sort of stuff, and Mania, yeah, every, everything else, like, so it kind of like I kind of lost it a little bit towards the end because I, I'm just not aware of like their later material really. It's just not what I'm into. I prefer like the first few albums of uh, Fallout Boy. But the, the, saying that though, they were still great. Like um, really good, grandiose sta- stage production. Like they looked great. They sounded great. It was good fun. Like I was kind of like um, I was quite far back watching them after going to the second stage to watch Pantera. But like uh, they they were great they were great um like just even just being stood like way far back and watching them like i had a really good time really really good time good dance along with my friends and uh yeah followed by regret really 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 enjoyed them and uh yeah i'd see them again and they had a massive crowd of download a really big crowd of download headliner which i expected really they can headline it again don't care what all the fucking meathead metalheads say like, oh, you got Fallout Boy. Oh, why can't it be fucking Maiden? Oh, why why can't it be fucking... <laughs> Death Leopard. Fuck off. Like, Fallout Boy. Uh, fucking festival headliners, whether you like it or not. And they can fucking go by a download, as far as I'm aware. Absolutely. So, yeah, that was my Saturday. Um, Pretty much after Fallout Boy played, it started fucking raining again. And it rained for fucking ages. Like, we went back to the campsite and there... Uh, Sat underneath our gazebo and uh, just chilled there for a bit and like just sat up and drank till about daft o'clock in the morning and you know just like all we could hear was just fucking rain batting against the fucking gazebo and uh, like it went on through the night as well which was an absolute bastard uh, so we we were dreading it in the morning we were fucking dreading it for the next day but when we got up it was sunny it was a lovely fucking day. And it was sunny for the rest of the fucking night. Honestly, all all Sunday was beautiful. Really nice and sun. Really nice and sunny. Muddy as fuck, but sunny. Um, yeah, but like you know, we woke up and we were having breakfast together and that sort of thing with a with a barbecue and stuff. And uh, we all got a notification on the app, um, saying that the gates aren't opening until noon now. Usually they'd open about half like ten o'clock, half ten, but they were going to open until twelve o'clock. Uh, because of the conditions of the ground, they wanted to try and make it better. I don't know what the fuck they did to make it better, because it was pretty much the same when we walked in. Um, so, yeah, they had to hold off from opening the doors, um, which I found quite frustrating at the time, because Code Orange were due for 12 o'clock, and I was already fucking shitting it because of uh, the the shit that went down with all, like, you know, the going at the arenas and the back search and all that sort of shit. So I was quite dreading it, really. Uh, so, what happened was... I set off anyways, like, I got, I went off anyways, just to to try and at least get there for Code Orange. But luckily, um, Download got their head screwed on, and they, um, sent an updated schedule to everyone's download app. And, um, everyone got updated times for everyone's sets and all that. Um, so it, it ended up being, um, like, so Code Orange were actually on 45 minutes later. And uh, the band that won before them were due to start as, you know, the doors, like, the, the gates opened, which was, yeah, a bit mental. I mean, it all got sorted out eventually. Um, so, yeah. This was fucking carnage right here. I went to see Code Orange uh, on the main stage. Who were fucking great. They were great. It's Code Orange. It's awesome. It's not the best time I've seen Code Orange. Um, I think they're more suited to being indoors. Um, but they were still fucking great. Um, they had a bit of a problem though. 
towards the end. <laughs> so, um, I don't think they played the full set, really. Um, but they went down, they played a few songs. They only played about five songs at this point. And Reba, God damn Reba from Code Orange, just before the start, she said, I'd like to shout out Avenged Sevenfold for forcing bands to cut the set short. And it was like, oh, oh, shit. So, I don't know how true that is, or there's something more underlining or anything like that. But that happened. Went into Bleeding in the Blair. They played that. And then they went straight into the next song. PA cut out. PA cut out completely. The band were playing. To, there was no sound coming out or anything like that. They were probably obviously hearing what was going on in their uni monitors. They kept playing. They kept playing. And uh, the people tried to fucking tell them to go. I think they got cut off because of what Reba said about Avengers 7 World. I think that's what it is. It, it feels like... Feels too good to be true. They only played five songs at this point, and they got cut off. Like they definitely had time for some more, for sure. And uh, yeah, they got they got told to get off and all that. They were fucking, they were fucking fuming. Honestly, the band were throwing the guitars all about, throwing the microphones, fucking kicking monitors all over the place and shit like that. Like they were fucking fuming. And then Jamie Morgan walks back on stage and all that, and he, he thanks everyone and all that. Th thanks everyone for showing up and all that. Uh, but yeah it was punk as fuck like it was like a cool ending to that set really to be fair i mean they were great they were fucking awesome like those songs are just fucking incredible live and uh yeah they were, they're like i just wish they were on for a bit longer and it didn't get cut short yeah it was a bit of a shame about that but um you know code orange forever they're fucking great um fucking Fair play for them, but sticking to their guns. If that is what the case is, I don't fucking know. Next up, though, my God, my fucking God. I go on about them on this podcast all the fucking time. I fucking go on about them all the time. You're all probably sick of me going on about them, but I don't care. Creeper came on the main stage, man. Creeper were fucking unbelievable. They were absolutely unbelievable, man. I just love this band so much. Every time I see them live, they just fucking turn up to 10 and they fucking smash it all the time. Even at festivals or support slots, anything like that, they just end up being like one of the best. And they were absolutely incredible. They were great. Full on stage production. They had dancers, they had choreography, they had fire, they had CO2. That like, like the whole stage set up looked amazing. Like they looked like they were ready for fucking headlining it never mind fucking just doing a random morning set well you know big early afternoon set like they were great they were just so fucking good man like so like it was mainly songs from like the latest album which i was fine with and uh like the, the odd one here and there from um ten in your arms and um uh, i forgot what it's called now sex death and infinite and the infinite void um like they were just absolutely amazing absolutely amazing and uh yeah just tight as fuck sounded amazing they brought on um dan jacobs from atreyu <laughs> to um just to, to play guitar for lovers led astray um so he made a little appearance as well uh like their set just went ridiculously quick it went ridiculously quick i didn't want them to stop they were so so good man i like everyone around me as well like they were all just like wow 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 just will gold just one of the best front men ever at the moment um god man just so good they are just so 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 good um and they announced as well that they're playing a, a core headline um one-off gig with blackville brides at wembley arena and i hope they fucking sell that shit out and uh people who are watching black veil brides they come out love and creeper because they deserve all of the attention in the world like i've said it before loads of times they should be one of the biggest bands going at the moment like they are absolutely incredible yeah shout out creeper a hell of a set absolute hell of a set they were amazing and uh, after those we got wind that there was a secret set happening in the fourth stage like the, the smallest stage at download and uh, we got confirmation that it was none other than Parkway Drive. So, after Creeper played, went and got a beer, made our way 
in early to that dog two stage, um, there was a band on. They were called Missio. I didn't like them. They sounded a bit like uh, fucking Imagine Dragons or whatever. So like we, we just sat, we, we just like watched their set, and um, we were pretty much we were very just inside. We were just to say inside of the tent, like just by the rim. Like it was absolutely rammed, even for this band that run before Parkway Drive. I thought, yeah, let's um, let's get ourselves there, um, so that we're in good time for Parkway Drive. We get a good um view. Didn't really get that good of a view, really. Uh, but we did see Parkway Drive play that little fucking stage, and the atmosphere in that tent was fucking wild. Everyone singing like really, really loud at the top of their lungs. Like Parkway Drive had like a like a made up little backdrop they got a surfboard and like they got some like gaffer tape and put like the like the init like the initials p w d in there for parkway drive and just set that up like that and um uh, like they were great they sounded awesome like it was just fucking carnage in that tent we didn't stay for the whole set like because where we were couldn't barely see the band uh really so we just thought um you know what we saw the first three songs we all needed a wee <laughs> we all needed a wee, we all needed a beer, and we went down to see Ball for Soup instead. I mean, I saw Parkway Drive last year at Download as well, on the main stage, and uh, they're better when they're on those big stages with all the pyro and all that, and the fire and everything. Like, they're better doing that. Like, when you're struggling to see the band, uh, see when you're struggling to see them, um, there's no point staying around for them, really. Uh, so... Went down to see Bon for Soup. They were really fucking good. They were, they were really great. I was expecting them to be quite naff, to be honest. But they were really great. Um, the rubber guitarist, Chris, couldn't make it. Um, I think it might have been due to like, health reasons. He had to go back home for some reason. Um, so Bon for Soup were initially like a free piece for the day. And um, fucking hell, that dude is... Jared, he's fucking funny, man. He's funny. He's like, he was just coming out of all sorts of shit. Like, just, uh, just made me laugh after every song. And, uh, there was one, one part of the set where they, like, they had to stop in the middle of a song and write, right, guys, that's, th this is the, uh, this is where, the part where we, uh, get a photo with the guys from Zebrahead. So, like, uh, never gonna give you up by Rick. Actually started playing. The Rick rolled the crowd, basically. They, they went from one side of the stage start pausing getting the photos taken then went to another side of the stage started getting the photos taken and then went straight back into the song it was quite funny and um they brought on the dude from wheatus to sing teenage dirtbag and then they announced there and then that they were going to be doing a tour together again playing the stockton globe fucking there for that and um yeah they were just great like all the songs are like played in double speed and i was just like i was just stood there thinking I know every fucking song here. Like, there was not a song that I didn't know. Like, they, they played everything. Every song that they played, I knew. Like, from, like, Kerrang! And, like, Scuzz and all that back in the day. MTV2. Like, I never listened to, like, a full album by this. And, like, they were just great fun, man. It was just a real good throwback. And, uh, yeah. I can't, can't really go wrong with it. It was awesome. They played Stockton. I'm gonna go over there for that. Uh, next up, on that main stage... Some 41, and it was a uh, kind of an emotional one, really. It is their final UK festival appearance, and um, they killed it, had lots of fire. Um, it was pretty much just like a greatest hit set, really. Did one or two songs from their new album, Heaven and Hell, and um, they played quite a lot of Chuck, which is quite an underrated album for, um, for Some 41, really. That's like their heavier, more moody album. Like, they played a few songs off that, which was awesome. Like, we're all to blame. They played the ending of 88. Obviously, um, Fat Lip and um, Into Deep and all that sort of shit. Motivation. Just great. Derek Wibley was there. I think he played guitar for a total of 30 seconds. <laughs> like, he, like, he was mainly, like, um, I've always known Derek Wibley for playing, playing guitar and singing. But, like, but uh, he, like on that Sunday, like, he, he pretty much, like, picked the guitar up for, like, 30 seconds for, like, two songs. <laughs> like, um... Uh, and uh, that was it, basically. It was, and there was the times where he wasn't singing. It was, it was quite bizarre that, like, he just had that guitar there for that. And that was it. Two different guitars as well. Like, he's got two different guitars and he's only singing for... He's only playing them for, like, 30 seconds on one song. You know? 
I found out quite funny. But yeah, some 41 were great. They were awesome. Um, you know, uh, they said they might be back again um, for like for one more UK date before they completely call it quits. And uh, yeah, it was um, it was it was a great set. It was a good set, man. I really enjoyed them. Um, I think I preferred the Slam Dunk set from a couple of years ago, but they were still great. They were still great. If only we could fly, Limp Biscuit. Oh my God, Limp Biscuit on the main stage. Hell on, absolute fucking carnage. I think Limp Biscuit pulled the biggest crowd a download. I genuinely think there was. There was loads of people wearing red caps, including me. Like I did for Halifax, wearing flame shirts, including me. Everyone was there for it. Everyone was there for a Limp Biscuit party. They had everyone jumping up and down in unison. Limp Biscuit. Honestly, it was fucking bananas. And their set went by really, really, really fucking quickly. They came on with break stuff. They came on. That's it. Opening track, break stuff. Let's go. And uh, many songs from Chocolate Starfish as well, which I was fucking buzzing about. And um, they, they played the George Michael Faith cover. Um, they had to stop um, the set. They had to stop the set for about five minutes or so because someone was injured. So Freddie stopped the set, and he was like, he was stood next to like one of the um, like you know one of the security guards that was like by the um, screen. And he was like talking to him like while it was all going down. He was like, "Are we all good to go?" Like he, was, he had like the microphone pointing to him and all that. It was quite it was quite funny trying to make like the best out of a bad situation, and. Um, yeah, it, it was it was great. It was really, really fucking great. Um, Limp Bizkit is one of the best bands ever. One of the best live bands of all time. Why the fuck anyone would go watch Hoover Stank at the same time? I don't know. <laughs> it's fucking insane. But yeah, Limp Bizkit were incredible. They were absolutely incredible. Loved them. Absolutely loved them. They're always amazing live. They're, they're always incredible. And they ended again with break stuff. They played break stuff at the end. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, um, they had like a few like um, tracks playing in between songs. Like, uh, like just like fucking around, making people laugh and stuff like that. Um, they, uh, yeah, which it was kind of like that. That was the only bit where I was a bit like, eh, I'd rather you stop doing that and just play more songs. Like the covers and medleys and stuff like that. I'm not all that bothered about them. Um, but it was break stuff, um, hot dog, rolling, my generation, my way, behind blue eyes, nucky, full Nelson, faith, take a look around, ended with break stuff again. What the fuck? <laughs> I was so it was fucking bananas. I think that's something that they're doing now. I think like all the gigs like they're opening and finishing with break stuff. Um, I mean, hey. If Europe can open with Final Countdown and finish Final Countdown, I'm sure Limp Biscuit can do can open with breaks up and end with break stuff. I'm sure they can do that, no problem. Uh, but yeah, they were fucking amazing. And this is it, last band, last band of the whole big download review. And I'm glad that you're still here with me. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, fishing off the download weekend. Not only do I think this band were the band of the day? I also think they were the band of the weekend, really. Avenged Sevenfold, for the third time, headlining download on the main stage, uh, touring their um, somewhat controversial album, um, just mixed opinions album, um, Life is But a Dream. Uh, it is an album I fucking absolutely adore. Um, if you haven't heard, like, I just wax lyrical about my um top 20 albums of it uh last year it was my favorite album that came out and uh let me tell you a lot of the people didn't vibe with that album when they played any of it really um but i fucking did big time um yeah they, they, like, they came on and it opened with uh game over and into mattel and uh, which i was not complaining about at all and uh, i thought like they just looked fucking incredible with all the visuals they've got going and everything they're not bothering with like pyro or fire or anything like that sort of shit like um like they, they got like they've got like this big visual thing that's going on like you know it's not like tool levels of fucking 
or Pink Floyd levels, but like it's getting there. Honestly, it really is getting there. Um, but like what the play get once they've done Game Over and Mattel Law, when they when you hear those um those string openings of Afterlife, the crowd went fucking bananas. Everyone singing along. Everyone would start pitting and that sort of shit. Um, yeah, like, and like, th- we got a good mixed bag of stuff here, really. Like, basically everything from all of the albums, apart from the very first one. And yeah, so he, like, he, he's a set list here, though. Game Over, Mattel, Afterlife, Hail to the King, We Love You, Buried Alive, Fiction, The Stage, Bad Country, Nobody, Nightmare, Unholy Confessions, A Little Piece of Heaven, Save Me and cosmic um so yeah um the i mean I'll, I'll go more about the songs that really really surprised me right so you, you're gonna expect like your stuff like backcountry and unholy confessions a little piece of heaven and all that from uh Avenged sevenfold what i wasn't expecting was songs like fiction and save me from nightmare like you know these these songs are, are deep cuts really they they they're deep cuts from Nightmare, right? I've never heard, never seen them play them live before. Like they're quite long, they're quite um, you know, emotional and um, very like you know they're not like like fiction isn't a rock song. It's not a metal song. It's a it's a piano ballad, a very very haunting piano ballad, and that was amazing. That was amazing. It was incredible. Uh, fucking awesome it was absolutely awesome same with save me save me is like a fucking 10 minute like uh like prog fucking avenge song it's incredible and like some of the best songs that they played though for uh, on that night though for me it's hard for me to pick like buried alive again another song from nightmare which i absolutely love um buried alive was a fucking unbelievable like uh, it's, it's mad because i've listened to that new album so much that i forgot about some of their absolute staples like buried alive and then when i got into that i was like oh my god it's buried alive and it was amazing and uh you know the stage from the title track of the previous album um that like that one's a fucking great song uh backcountry banger nobody from their new album i remember when nobody came out and i was i fucking hated it i generally hated it but nobody blew my mind it was incredible like the way it worked with all the tension and all the build-up with the imagery that was going on behind and everything like it was amazing like nobody like fucking blew me away we same with uh we love you as well like we love you like was awesome and it had like all like the lyrics come up on the screens at the same time like with the more words more needs more like you know that that sort of section of that song like it was incredible and i just loved seeing them um, m shadows get out the vocoder and go on fucking mad like uh it was almost like watching like a, a mic pattern in the works like it was fucking it was absolutely fucking awesome uh like uh, the, the songs from the new album were incredible um the the sound actually cut out during nightmare um uh, if, if i'm reading this right it, it, it cut out after the solo for nightmare like just completely cut out and uh we had to wait about five minutes or so um which was a bit of a bastard you know another song could have been um put in there uh but yeah it, it got cut out which was unfortunate um when was, everything got back to everything got back to normal again though straight into unholy confessions baby and it was fucking awesome like she said that you walked away try not to lose you you're a dream change <laughs> sorry you heard that that was awesome little piece of heaven obviously just really fucking beautiful amazing song like i loved all the imagery that were going on behind them for that it was awesome um just it was mad because like they've got like a little piece of heaven and save me back to back like two like really long songs like you know eight to ten minute long songs incredible and um then they finished with cosmic which is one of the highlight which is probably my favorite off the the latest album as well like got a lot of radio head vibes to it and muse and everything else and it's got like the the daft punk sort of vocoder like uh thing that's going on like cosmic sounded amazing it sounded absolutely amazing as a, as a set finisher 
and I was just like watching them in awe with, with that with that song. It was incredible. Um, yeah, Avenged Sevenfold like put on one hell of a daring set, like with their a lot of songs from their new album and uh, the visuals, not bothering with pyro or any, any bullshit like that. Like they were fucking amazing. They were absolutely amazing. They were, they were tight as fuck. They sounded incredible. The visuals, like, were jaw dropping. Like, it was it. It was amazing. The best time I've seen Avengers Unfold ever. And um, yeah, it was it was it was a beautiful set. It was a beautiful set. I know there was I had a lot seen a lot of complaints from people saying like, oh, they didn't play Beast and the Harlot, and uh, it was too much of the new stuff. Uh, there's, there was no pyro, that sort of thing. The set list was a bit weird. Like having fiction and save me in there, but like. You know that they've been, they've played downloaded a few times, and they've been to the U, they've been the UK in general a few times. You've, you've had your opportunity to hear songs like "Beast in the Harlot" and "Second Heartbeat," and you know, you know, "Trash and Sky" and all that sort of shit. Like you had your opportunity to hit, hear all that sort of shit live, "Shepherd of Fire" and stuff. Like this is an opportunity to see them doing something different, and I was all there for it, man. And it was amazing. It was absolutely incredible. Yeah. That, that I was, I was blown away by that. Like that, that set was great. Like for me, I'd probably say that was my favorite uh, set of the weekend. It was awesome. Yeah, please come back with an actual tour. I know M Shadows did say like um, he doesn't know whether this download show might be the only one of this um, life is but a dream run, or they might be doing some more UK dates in twenty twenty five. So we'll see and. Um, when they do, I'll be fucking one hundred percent there because I imagine like kind of a similar experience at all, like sitting back and watching like the um you know visuals and everything and the band going along with the music, like sitting down and watching that in an arena and indoor space would be quite special to be honest. Um, so yeah, that that was Avenged Sevenfold, and that was Download. That was Download Festival, folks. Um. I hope you enjoyed the review I had for it. Really, uh, download. I think as a whole, as a whole weekend. Yep, the weather was a bit shit here and there, but that did not stop me from enjoying enjoying me having the fucking greatest weekend of all time. You know, shout out to everyone who I camped with, everyone who I bumped into in general, all of the nice people around us. Like, you know, there was like security were great, all the organ organization was great. Like. Getting parked up, everything, catering, food. Um, apart from the people who eat f the fucking Yorkshire pudding wraps and all that, apparently uh, 300 people got food poisoning, so that's not good. Obviously, that's not Download's fault. It's the fucking vendor's fault, the bastards. So, yeah, if anyone had that, hope you got well from that soon. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I I couldn't really complain about this year, Download. Um, we're starting to see um, a jump in, like, new up and coming fresh bands taking on that main stage um we're starting to see a lot of that now there's not a lot of repeats which is refreshing to see like i can't tell you who i think will fucking headline next year's download um we, we well, i have absolutely no idea so we will see we will definitely see um but yeah this weekend could not complain about it rain can't complain about it a little bit but you know Obviously, that's not the festival's fault. It's the fucking country's fault. The bastard fucking country with its shit weather, which I like to complain about on the podcast all of the time. Uh, but, you know, being in the camp, surrounded by all my friends and family, having a good crack, everything, just can't complain about it at all. Like, download is just... It's one of those places, like... Like, when I walk in there, I always, like, have a... <sighs> It's good to be back, you know. It's, it's, I, I, it's, that's the feeling I get from it all the time, and um, yeah, I can't like just download forever for me. I will see it next year, no doubt. I will see it next year, and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that little uh, download review. Um, I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope that it makes you think. You know what? Download sounds like a good weekend. Maybe I should go get a ticket. I know they've got early bird tickets on sale now. There's options for like. Um, you know, like monthly payments, that sort of shit like that. You pay in installments, so I think that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, but yeah, 
download was amazing. Absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved it. See you next year, motherfuckers. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. That's it for today's episode. I mean, there was a Nintendo Direct, um, when was it? Yesterday? No. Um, two days ago. Um, just, uh, I'll just, uh, quickly go on about a few that I've highlighted for me. Um, you know, they opened up with, um, a new Mario and Luigi RPG. That looks quite good. Um, there's a new Metroid 4, Metroid Prime 4, like, definitely in the books, like, there's gameplay footage and uh, like a cinematic trailer. It looks amazing. Can't wait for that. Set out for 2025. Um, a new Legend of Zelda game where you actually play as Zelda as the protagonist. Um, and you, it's more of a puzzle type game, really. Set in that sort of 2D Link's Awakening remake type filter. Looks really, really cool. I'm going to be picking that up, definitely. New Super Mario Party, Jamboree. Looks really awesome as well. Um, you know, Super Mario Party is always fun to play. And this one just looks bigger and better and bolder than ever before. And you can play online up to 20 people, which, let me tell you, will be really good for streams. Definitely. Um, Donkey Kong Returns, HD remaster. That's going to be good. Dragon Quest, Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D remake. Um, I'm not familiar with that. Um with Dragon Quest at all, to be honest, but it looks really, really nice, I will say that. Um, it does actually look really, really good, and some people are really excited about that. Uh, Nintendo Switch Sports is getting uh, basketball. Wow, great. Um, let's see. Um, more stuff on Among Us. Uh, uh, Stray is getting put on Nintendo Switch, but it looks a bit um, muddy, and I don't really like the look of it. They've like, probably downgraded the graphics just to play that on there. Um, and there's uh, some new stuff on Nintendo Switch Online server. So you got Legend of Zelda Link to the Past of Four Swords on GBA, as well as Metroid Zero Mission and um, Perfect Dark and Turok on the Nintendo 64 as part of their mature bit. So, uh, yeah, that's it. And that's it for today's podcast. Uh, how long have we been fucking going for? Wow! This one's gone over an hour. Sorry if it's been a bit long. Um, but yeah, thank you again, everyone, for listening to this. I hope you're having a nice weekend the day you listen to this coming out. Hope you enjoyed the big download review. I was very excited to do this, really, after having such a mint weekend. And once again, thank you, everyone, for the past year of uh, support. Whether you've, you know, listened to one episode or 48 of them. Um, I appreciate every one of you. I appreciate everyone who's commented, who's joined the Discord coming into the streams and um just everything it's just, I'm, I'm really i'm forever grateful so thank you very much everyone who's been listening um i'll be back next week next week's uh, quite a good one as well i'm gonna see green day um at glasgow on uh is it wednesday night yeah i think it's wednesday night i'm seeing green day so no tuesday night i apologize yeah i'm going to see the ghost mo- movie as well so i'll have a chat about that that's on sunday uh yeah um I'm back at work tonight, so I should probably get ready for that. Thanks very much for listening, everyone. Take care. Thanks for this year of uh, pod Mastocast support. Um, I will see you later. Bye-bye. Take care.